everyone. It's great to see you coming through. Um, we've got a few more people to join us, but you're in for a treat this afternoon. So you have arrived at Cyber Connect Plus Insights and Punchlines. You'll be learning lots of really valuable bits and pieces to take into your future. And this event is powered by Cyber, Stone and Chalk, Ribbit, and of course, the International Oyster Program. Okay, what I'd like to do now is an acknowledgement of country. Obviously, we are in South Australia and in Victoria, and I think we've also got Cindy from New South Wales. So I'm going to do an acknowledgement of country based on where I'm at, which is regional Victoria. I'd like to actually acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land in which we meet today, which is the land of the, the peoples of the Jajawarung. And I would also like to pay my respects to their elders past and present. If you know the custodians of the land where you're from, um, please pop that in the chat. That's often a nice thing to acknowledge. I'd now like to pass over to the lovely Paula Oliver. Paula is our manager of cyber in Adelaide. And over to you, Paula. Thank you so much and hello everyone. I would like to, to begin by saying that on behalf of OSCYBER and the OSCYBER South Australian Node, that we're very proud partners of today's event and as a subsequent event from our Cyber Connect Talent Jam that we ran back in August. So it's great to be back and seeing so many people coming back and joining us again for some really great discussion. For those who, who aren't familiar, who perhaps didn't capture what OSCYBER does in the last session, a very brief overview. OSCYBER is the National Industry Growth Centre responsible for growing very vibrant cybersecurity um, industry and ecosystem here in Australia. And so growing any industry is, of course, um, built on the ability to develop a very skilled workforce. So that's why these events that are all about connecting our future workforce talent direct to our industry to provide guidance, help and insight are so very important and um, really close to our hearts. So Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Annette, who's our partner uh, from Ribbit, our general manager. Uh, Ribbit is such an innovative company and such a key part to how we do that connectivity. Annette, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Paula. And yes, welcome, everybody. It's really great to see you all here today. These lovely, fresh faces. So yes, just in case you don't know what Ribbit is. So Ribbit is a digital marketplace that um, was acquired by Stone and Shaw last year from CSIRO Data 61. And it connects students to jobs. Those jobs are paid and or course credit. It's completely free to use. It only has jobs for students, which makes it very special because all the jobs are for students and also early grads. Right now we've got 56 open roles and over half of them are in the IT programming category. So I really encourage you to jump onto Rivet, set up your profile and get matched. And that matching is based on skills. So it's not like LinkedIn where you have to list all of your experience. It's a skills-based matching system. So I encourage you to do that. Now at the end of today, Cindy, our guest presenter, I'll introduce in a minute, is she's going to share with you how students on Rivet can access all of her fabulous interviews and masterclasses for free. But I don't want to steal her punchline, so I'm going to now introduce Cindy. <laughs> so Cindy is passionate about digital transformation and she's a leader of change for individuals and organisations. She led a $70 million transformation program with the Combat and has built international software companies from Silicon Valley and Ireland, successfully taking them to acquisition and IPO. Embracing technologies such as AI and blockchain and with over 30 years experience across the UK, the USA, Japan and Asia, Cindy knows it's not just about technology, it's also about embracing culture and mindset. She's an internationally recognized thought leader recently named in the top 10 most impactful women in technology 2021. We're really lucky to hear more of her story and stories from other leaders in her network. Over to you, Cindy. Oh, wow. Thanks, Annette. And I would just want to say good afternoon to everybody. And thanks for that really kind introduction, Annette. It's really amazing to see such a wonderful collaboration of entities with incredible resources and capabilities that are helping to drive our nation forward. And I congratulate you all for coming today and joining us for what I'm hoping will be a really informative and thought-provoking session. 
and help you on your journey towards your career. There will be lots of tips and tools available for you, as Annette mentioned, so I encourage you to sit back and if you haven't got lunch yet or you've had lunch or you're having lunch, just enjoy the next 40 minutes or so and um, jot down any questions as we go along the way as well, because we will have time for Q&A at the end and I want to be able to answer as many questions that you have burning that time. So really excited to be here today and um, also want to thank you for taking the time to share feedback on the areas that were of most interest to you and it was really helpful to get those insights because it really gave me that ability to be able to prepare a specific presentation and dive into what is the most relevant information that you suggested was important to you and so I can make sure that I give you the be best value from this really short time that we've got together. So from the data that I received, most attendees joining us today are studying cybersecurity or law or infotech or networking or finance. That's, so broadly speaking, that's what we covered. And there was also a really heavy interest in our content around cybersecurity, management consulting, human resources and marketing. So over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to try to cover as much of, of, as I can as possible to cover some of those sort of key interest areas and again to answer any questions you have. So I'm just going to share my screen with you now and I've got the chat box open so if anybody has any problems not seeing anything or not hearing me just throw it in the chat box and I'll see it out the corner of my eye so I can just make sure everyone's all on track. So I'm just sharing my agenda with you now so we can just have a quick look at that for what we're going to cover in this part of the session. So I'm going to give you a bit of background to my career and share a few of my key tips with you and I'll explain what the International Oyster Programme is about and what inspired me to create that programme and its purpose. And then I'm going to dive straight into the areas that you've expressed most interest in and share some relevant insights from experts, which is going to be really exciting. And then we'll also have a look at the masterclasses and have a look at some of those that are available and I want to share with you some of the key punchlines to take away. There's a lot in there and you thankfully expressed a huge amount of interest across a lot of those masterclasses so I really had difficulty picking the right ones but hopefully we'll hit the spot for you there. And then we'll get into a group sort of coaching Q&A session before we wrap up with some feedback. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen so that I can actually see you all and speak to you all. So let's just get started. As I mentioned, we've got very limited time. I'm just seeing messages come through. No webcam. Hopefully that's somebody else's webcam they can, and they, they can still see what we're sharing. So just keeping an eye on the side there. Um, with you all. We've got very limited time but I want to get through as much as possible and get you to get as much as you can out of this session. So I'm just going to give you a very quick glimpse about my career because I don't want to waste it, waste precious time. But and, and the other thing that I'm going to do is that in the case of all the interviews that we do, we actually conduct like a, we always ask people, what are your three key tips that you would leave with the audience? So I'm going to share mine with you as well. So going to my career actually spans across investment banking, management consulting and software technology, but there's a consistent theme across there and that's innovation. And funnily enough, I never actually set out to work in technolo technology. It really found me. And I was fortunate to work on a really unique software platform in London. And because of those skills, they, they were so rare in Australia and I came here on a holiday and then I got um, sponsored to stay in Australia because I luckily happened to know a lot about that particular package. So that was the start of my journey on, in technology. And after a couple of years with that company, I got to work with a Silicon Valley tech company, which got me traveling all over the world. And since then, I've set up technology companies and some of those have included cybersecurity software solutions around strong authentication for internet banking, fraud, credit card fraud prevention, that sort of thing. And I built those companies out through the whole Asia Pacific region. Um, but now I currently lead a company called Serendip ID and that focuses on digital identity verification, but with a consumer based identity wallet as such. So I really believe that our identity data and credentials should be in the hands of us 
and that we should be able to choose where we reuse those. So that's the premise of what I work on in that solution. It is actually quite a leading edge technology and it can be built on blockchain for mass consumption. So that's the tra trajectory that we're aiming towards. And I've always tried to embrace new and emerging technology. And essentially, I work with companies to find solutions to their business problems and ensure that they remain relevant in a fast changing digital world. So in addition to technology, I believe, as Annette said, that human transformation is equally, if not more important. So I lead change in organisations and individuals, and I do that in groups, in teams or one on one. So some of the tools that I provide to my clients include these online masterclasses, which enable personal development covering all sorts of topics that are generic and apply to any person of any age at any stage of their career. And that's why it's integrated into the International Oyster Program because it's actually relevant for everybody and every student. So we're going to be looking at some of these today. And I just wanna jump straight into that and get you in, involved in everything that I can help you understand and see what we can show today. So I'm going to share with you, just before we jump into that, my three key tips. So I mentioned that each of our interviews, we do three key tips. And I'm going to share mine. So the first one is always have a positive attitude. The second one is to be confident. So even when you're shaking in your boots and you really feel like you've got this imposter syndrome happening, just always stand your ground and be confident. And the third one is take every opportunity that comes your way. Now, I share these with you because I've actually lived by these. And I attribute most of my success to actually those three proven key tips. So. I think they're really important ones to take away with you today. So let's take a moment to focus specifically on the International Oyster Program. Just see if my slide, there we go. So everyone can see the slide. I'm ho hoping, <laughs> I've done this a few times, but you never know if technology ever is uh, gonna let you down. So in the International Oyster Program, it's about it's, it's basically a suite of tools and services that are designed for students in the latter years of high school or TAFE or university. And it has three core functions. The first is to assess, uh, sorry, access the masterclasses that can help you prepare for the workplace. So if you consider these as like online mentoring services where hundreds of years of experience has been collected and we've brought that to you in a really concise way to fast track your skills. So I always look at this and think if somebody could dump their knowledge into my brain that they've accumulated over 30 years and you, you times that by 10 people, wouldn't we be in an amazing place? Wouldn't we have such great insights that can leapfrog us forward? So that's what we're trying to do here. And we're also trying to help overcome challenges that you might face as they arise. The second part is to access an unparalleled network of connections that are going to get you started in your career with the best possible opportunities and support. And this network is going to enable you to access mentoring, intern opportunities, work experience and job opportunities. And this includes organisations such as Ribbit. And Annette just mentioned that there were 56 open roles at the moment. So that's a prime example of, of how that particular part of the function works. And the third one is to provide access to hear from industry experts in their field who share their journey, their qualifications, what they love about their roles, what are their challenges, and what are the characteristics of individuals that suit those roles? What other things are there? Your path to entry, and importantly, what tips can they give you for a career in that field? Now, the International Oyster Program all started because my son and my daughter, who are year 11 and year 12 students, were talking about career options. And I was asking them a few quizzes about, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And they had these glazed looks on their faces. So it really became obvious to me that they had access to quantitative data, but very little exposure to qualitative data. And by that, their career guidance was based on a lot of theoretical information, but students weren't getting input from real people in real jobs or professions talking about the future and if those jobs are even valid for the future and what opportunities there were for students. 
So that's when I decided to do something about it. And I launched the International Oyster Program last year so I could try and make a small difference for students trying to navigate a career path and gain skills and insights along. So as I mentioned, we've got a three pronged approach to the International Oyster Program. And I want to, first of all, dive into some interviews that have been conducted already. So we've already got these ones on our books. Now we've got over 20 in our current list. And I think you all had a chance to review those because we obviously got the feedback around which ones you were particularly interested in. And you were asked to express what those preferences would be. And I thank you for your input in that because the results were actually very clear. So what came through from your input was that the majority of you were all keen to hear from Claude Curry, who's the head of cybersecurity and risk services at Wipro. This was the most popular interview. Next, but with equal interest, exactly the same number of people were interested in both of these, was Craig Davis and Jenny McLaughlin, and they're both from management consulting firms, KPMG and Ernst & Young. And then following behind that was a chief technologist from Optus, and then Amy Rose on Future of Work. And across that, there was also a strong interest in marketing and human, human resources as well. But for today, given the limited amount of time we actually have, I'm just going to focus on a few of the key messages from the top choices. So I'm just going to stop sharing here because when I share again, I need to put some sound on. So I want to make sure that's all going to work for us. So let's talk about the relevant insights from experts, which is the next agenda item. So the purpose of this part of the presentation is to give you a sort of whistle stop insight to the key messages that are shared by these professionals. Shortly, I'm going to run some videos and I'll share my screen and sound, as I said. So drop me any feedback in the chat box if you've got any problems hearing, but I think everything should be okay. Now, I just want to start by talking, talking um, about Claude and what he had to say. Claude is the head of cybersecurity at, risk, at Wipro, as I mentioned, and we had about a half hour chat. So the full interview is available to you, which we'll talk about later on as how you access all of that. But what I wanted to do today was just give you a bit of a quick insight and snippet to what you can expect to hear from that and some of the things that he was able to share. I'm just going to jump onto that right now. Sorry. I'm just going to share my screen with some sound and we should be good to go. If you were as a student looking to get into risk and cyber security, what would your advice be to those people? First thing is understanding the why they're getting into, for example, cyber security and risk, the, whether they're going to enjoy the journey and whether the journey will be really rewarding for them. The world after COVID have accelerated the pace of digitization. Mm. Almost every company, and I, I, I don't know any company actually, small or big now, that is not going through some sort of digital transformation. That means anything that was operationally done by paperwork or done through a less automated process now is getting digitized. So digital transformation bring that risk with it is that the exposure of what we call the crown jewels of any organization mm. to the internet and also to, to other risk factors. Mm. And that means you are more, what we call it is the attack surface. So the attack surface becomes much wider for an attacker to come and steal and destroy your business mm. and ask you for ransomware or, or just put a malware to actually take all your intellectual property away from you that you've paid a lot of money for. Mm. And therefore, this is something starting and it's going to be, it's big and it's going to be even bigger. We've got a massive skill shortage in cybersecurity. Mm. So if you specialize in cybersecurity, if you think about that domain, and you want to work, you're never going to be out of work. There's a lot of variety in, in cyber, right? So if you want to dive, I'll give just a one minute view around how many roles you can have. Mm. So the cybersecurity is not an IT problem. Yes. Cybersecurity is a business problem. Put some effort to understand this space. Mm. It's worthwhile. Find yourself a mentor. I'm just going to stop sharing that. That was just a, a quick sort of insight as to part of the, the conversation that Claude and I had. 
And I think the main point that Claude really made during the conversation was that we're actually living in a cyber warfare right now, that our governments are constantly protecting us from cyber attacks, and this is a growing area. And there's a skill shortage in that space. So if you take up a career in cybersecurity, you'll never be out of a job, according to, Clark, to Claude. Now, when I last checked, Australia reported a shortage of 2,300 workers in cybersecurity, and they've got an expected demand of at least 17,600 additional professionals in the sector by 2026. So it doesn't take to be one that is rewarding. And during that 30 minute interview with Claude, he describes how digital transformation is a breeding ground for cybersecurity exposures and talks about different roles in a career in cybersecurity. And he has tons of good attitude, be a good listener and be a good learner. So that's a little bit of an insight from Claude. I hope that's got you excited. And um, I hope that you'll want to have a closer look at his, his interview shortly. Now I'm going to now share with you a snippet from Craig. Let me just get this one up and running. So Craig was the other person that you all showed an interest in. And I'll just pause that for one second while it's ready to go. He was equally high on your interest barometer. It, Craig is actually the, the, Craig is a partner with KPMG on risk advisory. And uh, I'm just getting a message that my sound is dropping out occasionally. I can switch to a different Wi-Fi. So just let me know if it keeps on happening and I'll make a switch. Otherwise I'll just keep it as it is for the moment. Yeah, so Craig focuses on risk management services. And in that full interview, he discusses how tra traditional emerging risk management requirements are evolving with that incremental increase in technology and in particular cyber attacks. So I, I picked up a lot around, you know, whilst he's a partner in, in, in an area focusing on risk, which often has a lot to do with regulatory, he also um, has that overlap with cybersecurity as well. So I think that when you start to look at different careers, you can go down one path and still be touching on an area that is incredibly you know, important and dear to your heart. Anyway, let me share a little bit about what Craig said. One second. From a consulting perspective, we help our clients make sure that they are managing that risk appropriately or they are meeting their regulatory obligations. Mm -hmm. I would recommend anyone that whatever industry they get into, that they do look to work overseas. From a personal and a career perspective, it's extremely rewarding. From a consulting perspective, perspective, our clients are always looking for that international experience. As a consultant, there's, there's really two career paths you take. One is to partner and, and one is that you remain as a subject matter expert. A number of the roles that we would be looking to fill would be around that digital technology side of things and, and or on the quantitative side around AI modeling, machine mm -hmm. learning modeling, those types of areas. Just minimize that so we don't end up hearing another so when you hear that full interview with Craig, he will talk about that risk management as it relates to cybersecurity. And he takes us through all the different options for a career in risk management and the pathways to entry. Craig explains that you can choose a career as a subject matter expert, or you can take a path into management towards becoming a partner. And as a partner, you take on more managerial responsibilities, including marketing and human resources and a lot more client facing interactions but those clients have a lot of deep knowledge so you're going to need a lot of information and knowledge and experience on your subject matter before you get to that level if that's what you want to aspire to. He also talks about all the different roles and he talks about the fact that when they look to hire different people they're looking at areas like digital technology, AI modeling and machine learning so it's quite a diverse sort of set if when you understand all the different roles that are part of that group there is so much opportunity to be able to immerse yourself in those spaces now craig's advice is to again three key points be adaptable and agile get as much experience as you can differentiate yourself and he actually slips in two more don't be judgmental of others and understand how others tick 
So again, I encourage you to listen to that full recording with Craig because he's got some incredible insights. He's traveled and worked all around the world and has a lot to bring to um, the table. Now, that's a couple of snippets of those videos, but two others that you uh, did come up with that, that you found quite interesting. Actually, there were three, but I'm just going to talk about a couple of those. The other one that was on equal interest for you with Craig was a lady called Jenny McLaughlin. So on your feedback, she was equal there with Craig. And interestingly, she's also a partner in a management consulting firm, but she has a different role. And she's actually with Ernst & Young. And her focus is on organizations being purpose led. Now, I've actually known Jenny for a long time and she ran a company called Cybertrust probably about 15 years ago. And I worked with her at Optus as well. And she, so she's incredibly experienced and one woman that I hold in the highest regard. So she's diversified quite a lot, which I guess a message to you all is that you might go into a career in cybersecurity, but you could still end up doing something like purpose led driven organizations. So there's a lot of opportunity in those big companies. Now, she explains that there's two ways to gain entry into a management consulting company like Ernst & Young. You can go in through the graduate or intern program, but they refer to it as e at EY as a career consultant. So that's someone who starts early on in their career or from university and comes up through the ranks. Or having the experience and wisdom, you can go into EY at a partner level. And that's what Jenny did. And this is referred to as a direct access partner. So someone who comes directly from industry into the firm. Now, when she talks in her interview, she shares invaluable advice for people looking to join a management consulting firm. She says there's three main facets to enjoy that make this the right career. She said, you must have a hunger for learning. You must be curious and you must be comfortable being uncomfortable. And what she means by that is to be comfortable with people inside the firm and at the end client relationships. And her final tip is knowing how to reach out and get expert advice. So be comfortable with others in your organization too. So be fearless essentially. If you're looking to enter Ernst & Young or any other management consulting firm as a graduate, Jenny explains that they would look for soft skills. For example, how are you leading in a group? How confident are you in public speaking? And how can you take on a challenge and deal with it in real time? And they actually do these tests. They have panels of people that interview graduates and they do these tests with you in those scenarios. So it's good to be prepared and it's good to have great stories to tell in your experience in areas like that. So emotional intelligence is a really important quality. So I hope you got some great tips from those experts. As I said, tons and tons in there, but those are some of the ones that you all expressed you were particularly interested in. So I wanted to share those ones with you today. And I know we're limited on time, so I'm just keeping on going with the ones that I know are, are important. Now, coming back to the slide pack, I have, have a few slides here where we talked a little bit about Claude. He's, he touches on here, what's your purpose, thinking outside the box and so on. You can read their bios. You can go to the website and have a look under the masterclasses. You'll be able to see all of those in pieces there. There's Craig, smiling face, tells you all the things that you need to be thinking about, gives you a bit of background about him. All of these people have got their LinkedIn profiles. All of them are very happy to mentor you. So if you ever feel like you need to reach out, follow the links, tell them that you've come through the International Oyster Program and I'll guarantee you that they'll give you the time of day. And um, Jenny, there is the third one we talked about. Now, Amy Rose, just want to touch on Amy. Really interesting conversation that we had with Amy. And this was incredibly insightful, especially if you're interested in technology and how this is being used to focus on ethical and human centered solutions for a brighter future for people and using blockchain technology. So looking at emerging technology and how that can be utilized. Amy's developed novel medical sensors and brain computer interface headsets for the treatment of autism and ADHD operations. Unbelievable. And she describes how her earlier experiences in child protection was a foundation 
for her drive to create these solutions for disabled people. So again, she's come from this passion. What was her passion and what has really sort of inspired her and what does she really feel that she connects with? And that's what's driven her in this particular career path. She says that once you understand the environments that you thrive in, then you can choose which path you want to go down for your career. And we talked about the topic of the future of work. And interestingly, Amy had looked at how homes had been built in the, or were being built at the present moment and how that plays out for her in the future. So she looked at ways that houses were being built overseas. And she actually realized that in the future, there's not really many jobs at all in that particular area. So she actually helped develop some courses on careers that have a future. So the careers that we know today that might become obsolete in the future, you don't want to go down that path, but what are the careers that actually have a future? And she's really happy to talk to you about those things as well. So I encourage you to jump on and listen to what she has to say. So am I going okay here? Is everybody with me still? <laughs> Just drop a Y in the chat box. You're if you're all fired up and you can't wait to hear about all of those interesting interviews. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of interest across technology and human resources. Those are the sort of interviews that you were expressing an interview, an interest in, and they're all available to you via Ribbit. Thank you, Annette. I'm just going to drop a chat box, drop a quick link in the chat box, and I know I've got some backup support here if that needs to be repeated, but this is a full suite of interviews that you can actually jump on and have a look at your leisure. And when you sign up, Ribbit will very kindly give you um, access to that. When you sign up, you will have access to every single interview but they're actually listed down in the platform that you'll log on to. So you can pick and choose from any of them at any time and you can go back to it at any time. If you choose in a year, you want to change your career or you're thinking about looking at something else, you pop back on and you see who's talked about it and it's right there for you. So we'll give you information on how you can access all of those uh, interviews shortly. But can if I can just wrap up the relevant insights from experts by saying a big thank you for sharing the other topics and the other areas of interest or companies that you're keen to hear from. So I'm going to be adding those to my pipeline of interviews. And I'm just going to ask you if you know anybody in particular that you'd like to hear from, then please let me know. You can drop me an email or you can pop it in the chat box. I'm sure we'll be able to pick up all the, the chat afterwards. But just let me know and I'm happy to reach out to them and just ask them for an interview, it's no problem. Currently, and depending on my time availability, we're adding about one to two interviews a week. So you need to keep checking on your dash dashboard because we just seamlessly add them to your profile. You might get an email come out now and again to say, hey, by the way, we've just added this one and there will be a prompt for you. But if you don't, just keep on checking. We've got a couple coming up which might be of interest to you. The first one is um, with a guy, guy called Steve Gersten. He is a business consultant from Tampa in Florida. I have personally worked with him. He does a lot of investor relations. He raises capital for startup companies. He's an amazing guy. So he's going to be added to your list shortly. And also I've got an interview coming up with Ian Opperman, who's the New South Wales government chief data scientist. And he's also an industry professor at UTS. So there's plenty to look forward to. I think, Annette, you were helpful in orchestrating that. So that's how the network works, guys. This is how it operates. <laughs> now I'm conscious of time and we also need to touch on the masterclasses. And so I'm just going to give you a quick link there. Again, I know I've got back up on this, but if there's any problems, this is the full brochure of all the masterclasses that we also have available to you. And prior to this session, you were asked to express your preference across the suite of masterclasses. And looking at the summary of that data, the interest spanned across every masterclass, <laughs> which was really great news because it demonstrates to me that each of these topics are really important to you. And that's what we're here to do. So that was really exciting, but also quite daunting because how am I going to cover all of those and give you some key insights in just this short time? But anyway, we're going to give it a try. Um, these masterclasses, they're not industry or profession specific like the interviews are. They're actually generic. They're part of my company, Braintree, which is a coaching company. And human transformation is what we, we talk about there. And so they're part of that mentoring portfolio and coaching portfolio that we provide. But because they're so applicable to everybody, 
we make them available in the International Oyster Programme to all the students. So most of these courses have actually been developed at the request of our clients and some even our university students who subscribe to the service. So I'll give you an example. The one that talks about LinkedIn, I think the LinkedIn profile setup or how to use it for your network, that was actually inspired by all the students at the Melbourne Institute of Technology. So that's why I wrote that program for them. So it's really applicable to all the students that have joined us today. So I encourage you to jump onto that. Now, if you need to look at if the brochure doesn't work or you want to have a quick look and you want to see some briefs or whatever, you can just jump onto that website and that will take you through. Everyone should get all of the links sent to you after this session anyway. So don't worry if you can't capture them in the chat box and you want to keep focused, don't, just, don't get distracted because we will give them out to you again a bit later. But in there, you'll be able to hear a little introduction about what each masterclass is like and what you can expect to learn. But having said that, I wanted to share with you some of the ahas of the courses and it was really hard to choose the top three because you all have such amazing interests. And again, I thank you for that, but I just wanna have a look at a couple of these. Now I just referred to one called why use LinkedIn for networking. Have you ever heard of the term, your network is your net worth? Your network is your net worth. Now in this class, we cover the importance of a really strong network to help you succeed in your career. And that's why it's one of the three prongs in the International Oyster Programme, because we understand the value of networks. So this course will help you build your network. How do you pick and choose? How do you do that professionally? How do you make sure you're selective as who you, who you introduce into your network at any time? This also looks at how you can attract connections, how you can build your profile and how you can make LinkedIn really work for you. So I definitely encourage you to have a look at that. And I'm going to just give you a very quick snippet of that one second. I personally have had a LinkedIn profile for a very long time and became a premium LinkedIn member in 2016. At the last count, I had 7,238 connections. And what's interesting about that number is that I would choose ignore on approximately 10 requests to connect each week. Being selective about who you allow into your network is critical. I'll talk more a little bit about that later on. But first of all, let me give you a glimpse of how LinkedIn can work if you use it properly. Hey, I'm not going to I'm not going to bore you with all the details of that, but that should excite you to want to know how <laughs> LinkedIn is going to get you excited to, to find out how that can work for you. So again, just jump onto the masterclasses screen. You can have a little bit of a listen to that. And in fact, I will just again pop that link in there for you later to have a look at. And let's just have another look at a quick masterclass that you again express, express a lot of interest in, and that was four steps to achieving your goals. Now, this is based on a coaching model that you can use time and time again. And in fact, if you've got the subscriptions through Rib, through Ribbit, you can jump on that anytime. Whenever you're faced with a challenge or you want to achieve a goal, whether it's personal, whether it's related to your career, to your studies, you just jump on and you can use the same principle over and over again. So it's a tool that's right there at your fingertips. And I'm going to quickly share with you what some other people have actually said that they benefited from the class. So you don't want to hear it from me, you can hear it from them. So let's just have a quick look at that. And you're on your way to changing your life. A few others who've actually attended the same course said, it's a great opportunity to slow down and structure your thinking about what's important to you. It lets you look at your ambitions from multiple perspectives to ensure it's important to you and then build your own commitment to make the changes that are important to you. Somebody else said, Cindy's insightful guidance and engaging style is an ideal combination to help you identify and simplify your goals and enable you to build an effective executable plan. And finally, Cindy's guidance is super helpful to identify actionable next steps to achieve your goal from setting the right goal and how to approach it. So I look forward to seeing you at the next session of four steps to achieving your goals. Bye for now.
Okay, so that's a, a little bit about what other people said as to what they achieved from it. So hopefully you can get on there, have a quick look around and see what that can do for you. Now, two others that you also expressed an interest in were six ways to improve in your well-being. This was a really nice one, actually, because it's not all about focusing on goals or LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff. It's actually looking at what you need to do individually. How do you keep a good balance on your life? And we talk about what's called the PERMA model. And the PERMA means positive emotion, engagement, relationships, meaning, accomplishment and health. And it talks about how they all work together to give you a holistic well-being approach. And through that session, we dive into different pillars and my takeaways from that session, because one of my colleagues actually delivered that. And I talk about what I took away was three things again. First was we can be so busy with our lives that we keep doing, but we're not taking out time to reflect. So in the program, she runs through a gratitude exercise that really helps you during that session and kind of grounds you. It's really powerful. The other thing I, I took away was everyone wants to get balance in their life and having faith in our own selves is really important and the ability to keep on learning. So that was quite an important one for me. And the third one was listening to our bodies and minds and the impact on how we project that onto other people. So what's going on inside for us is what we project. There's often a term, your perception is your projection. So how you perceive yourself is what you project. So then you can really come to an understanding about what that's doing for you. And then how do you change your behavior so that you wanna project yourself in the way that you prefer. Now, um, we don't have time to go through all of those masterclasses, but I do encourage you to visit that page as we mentioned um, before. There's the, the link again, have a look around, explore it, listen to some of the previews, and um, this will give you a feel for what you can expect. When you go through the registration process with Ribbit, we can just allocate whichever ones you're interested in and off you go. You can watch it whenever you like, you can stop and start, pick it up, drop it, whatever you like. But I do assure you that all of these are going to serve you really well. Now, what I'm gonna say next is really important, so you need to listen up, okay? <laughs> Ribbit, are a partner with Braintree and the International Oyster Program, and they've sponsored your subscription to this service. So everything that we've talked about today is yours, completely free with compliments of Ribbit. That subscription is valued at $495. So it's a really generous offer from Ribbit. So I just wanna say thank you, Annette, and all of the team for everything that you do to support your communities. Absolutely unbelievable. And if you haven't already subscribed, then all you need to do is drop me an email and say that you're with Ribbit and want to claim your free subscription and we'll get you set up straight away. So I'm expecting my inbox to be flooded with emails this afternoon. <laughs> so you can use those links um, in the chat box that I've already given you, or you can just email me. If you want more information, you can just visit us at braintree.net.au. Now, I'm sure there's lots of questions that have come up for you. There's been a lot going on in the chat box over the side here, and I haven't been reading all of it because there's such rich content, which I'm so excited about. I can't wait to read it later, but I'm hoping that there's going to be lots of really juicy questions in there for me. I just want you to be able to feel free now to put your hand up, drop a question in the chat box. This is open. It's an open discussion, so I encourage others to jump in. If someone calls out and says, hey, I don't know what to do about this, and someone's got an answer, then feel free, be my guest, jump in, tell everybody how you've solved the problem yourself because that's what we're here for, we're a group to collaborate and support each other. But I'm hoping that this session has given you a glimpse at the art of the possible and I hope you can extract enormous value from everything that's on offer to you. It's why I do what I do, it's what I'm passionate about. And just before I wrap up, there's some questions that I wanna be able to ask you. And, and I want to also just let you know that there are a number of other resources that are available to you across the sort of spectrum of services that I have. So we've got the um, masterclasses that we talked about, but there's also a bunch of podcasts that you can go in and listen to. One of those is um, Leadership in 4D about the importance of data. Another is why human transformation is essential. We've got a fireside chat with women in technology and leadership that we did. Leading in COVID-19, 
So they're all available. Oh, when I wear my other hat, my Serendip ID hat, we've got a course around notifiable data breach scheme. So if you're not sure about what that means, go on and have a look because you really, if you can go into an organization and understand how they need to protect the personal information of their customers and how you need to know to protect your own, strongly encourage you to jump on that. There's also under Serendip ID, there's some other um, fireside chats, podcasts, whatever you want to call them, which I think would be really relevant to this group. And that's why I wanted to raise it. A couple are what keeps CISOs, Chief Information Security Officers, awake at night. And we talk about what questions boards of directors should be asking. And we also talk about data sovereignty and how does that relate to your business and what issues do you need to comply with? So I'm going to pop that all in there for you and it will all be available again afterwards. Before we just open it up for questions, there's one thing I want to do before I just hand back to Annette is to just leave some feedback if you can. I do this because I love it. I love to know that our network gets benefit and I want you to expend it to your network as well. I want you to pass this forward. So what I'd love you to do is jump onto some of the social media links that I'm just going to pop up for you. And I'm going to just ask you if you wouldn't mind leave a really amazing comment and a big shout out for Ribbit and Stone and Chalk and the cyber team there and of course the International Oyster Programme and just tell everybody what you found amazing about what you've heard today. If you didn't find it amazing then don't say anything. <laughs> But I'd love to know that you've done, that you've got value and and let everybody else know about it as well. Yeah, just want to just want to open it up to the floor. And if you haven't got some questions, then I certainly have questions for you. Annette, are you happy to to chat on that as well? Yeah, yeah I'll have a quick look in the chat box in the meantime, see what's there. <laughs> There's been a lot of really great conversation in the chat, triggered by your uh, presentation, very much in around the cybersecurity that, you know, it's been taught in schools. So the next generation is far more cyber secure aware. I made the point that we also need to look after our older generation that are not digital natives. There's a reference there also interest in understanding how you find mental, which is a big topic in itself. And a, I'm sure there's a number of us on the session here <clears throat> that have some experiences we can share. I'll very quickly share mine. I saw an amazing lady on a video, found out who she was, contacted her and just asked the question, will you please mentor me? And I was very lucky. She said, yes, find someone and be bold and ask the question. I just wanted to, I guess there's some so many interesting things said today. And I loved at the beginning that idea that journey can start from anywhere and it, it, it can be a combination it's fate and fortune it's not necessarily a conscious decision that you've made yourself and just being open to all of those experiences and and taking advantage of those opportunities and I think you can do that throughout your career it's not necessarily just while you're young and coming out of university but I think I think it was also mentioned being aware of what's going on around you and absorbing as much as you can so that you're in a position to adapt to change quickly rather than being the last person to adapt to change. And there was a comment made about international experience and that got me to thinking again in terms of adaptability, that, that saying of when in Rome. And I think that's really important in an international context, but it's also important in any organization you might work with because there are differences between big corporates and government and startups. And so again, you know, when in Rome um, and just be aware, listen to what's going on around you, learn, absorb. I always joke that I learn through osmosis and yeah, I'm probably the only one that laughs at that, but anyway. But uh, I think also, and this is also meant to be humorous, but I'm terrible with jokes anyway. The last part about making time for yourself to reflect. Well, when you do that's data, okay? Making time to reflect, thinking about what you've done, that is data on which you can choose to alter your course or stay the course based on decision-making data. So I just thought that was fun and silly, but, um, but it's a point. We live in a world that is driven by data decisions and um, your own experiences are your own form of data. And it's so important to take care of yourself and every now and again, just check in Am I on the course I want to be on or do I need to change something? And what's your evidence for supporting that change? 
so you don't make mistakes. I've made a few silly ones in the past and um, probably still will, but everything is a learning experience. So I just wanted to add that and thank you, Cindy. That was also all such great content. Now, I think, Cindy, you have some questions you might like to pose to our audience. So shall we give that a go? I do. I do. And I just noticed that there was one that popped up in somebody's asked, I have seven years of physical security experience and I want to transition into cyber security. How much of the technical side do I need to know to be seen as worthwhile to an employer? A few things come to mind very quickly with that one. If you don't mind me just jumping in and answering that. And Rakesh has also said, no need, just get knowledge and five ways to improve yourself. Perfect. That sounds like a new masterclass to me. I think, I think a couple of things that came to mind on the first question is if we go back to what Claude said, this is not a technology problem. It's a business problem. So to answer your question, how much of the technical side do I need to know? To be honest, probably not an awful lot. Now, the last thing you also want to do is go down a path of trying to skill up in an area that is actually not even going to serve you when you get into a particular role. So going back to a next point, I would say find yourself a decent mentor. Find somebody who is perhaps in a role that you're looking to get into or is a senior person within an organisation of something you're trying to get into because that could actually be a door opener for you in itself. So if you seek somebody out and you use your initiative and you're self-motivated, self-driven to say, hey, I want to understand a little bit more about this. How can you help me? How can I have that, you know, wow factor that I can differentiate myself and do a great job in this space? Then number one, you're going to get amazing feedback. And number two, you're going to get credibility from that individual. And you'll probably find that within their network, they'll be able to find something for you. So that would be my my recommendation if anyone else has got any other suggestions then feel free to jump in yeah i might just add to that cindy actually i think if you're looking to start in cyber and you're pivoting or transitioning from another career i would definitely recommend that you jump into exploring the different categories and skill set areas of cyber security because it is very diverse and so just jumping straight into a technical field may not serve you. It may actually be that you find you align your transferable skill sets might align to another specific category in cybersecurity that is more fitting for you, where you might accelerate your career pathway a lot faster than if you force yourself to go down a technical route or a route that, you know, isn't really aligned to you. So there's a link that's just been dropped into the chat channel by Jasmine, um, who, who works with me in the Off Cyber SA node. And that has a workforce framework for cybersecurity careers. It helps with profiles of different particular uh, roles in cybersecurity. So definitely recommend that you check that out, find your skill match, find your category match, and start exploring some of those varied roles that might suit you before you start investing in training and money in courses that might skill you up before you start applying for jobs. Thanks so much. That's great advice. I just also realized that some of the um, links that I've been sharing earlier, I think I only sent them to the MIT. So whoever the MIT person has probably been getting all the really juicy links and everything and nobody else has got them. So I'm just quickly dropping them into the chat box there so you can all catch up. But again, we'll send them out to you as well afterwards. If there's any other questions, happy to address those. Otherwise, I will move into how to make a professional resume there's an interesting one anybody got any tips on that yeah i do we run a, another program called pivot so my name is abby i work for stone and chalk and we also run a fantastic two-hour workshop which is actually about skills mapping and developing a, a resume that's going to be read sometimes it goes through a computer analysis first and also how to develop your personal brand what is your digital footprint all those sorts of things so i'll put the link in the chat as well and some of you might like to have a look at some of the workshops and events that we offer there as well Excellent. well done Thank you. perfectly so, i'm cindy so, um, well, we've got one minute left, so I'm going to put my coaching hat on for one second because I want everybody to go away from this session with some things to think about. And uh, you might ponder on these over the next couple of days, but they're pretty open areas. There's seven here, seven points, and I want you to all go away and think about them and I will drop them in the chat box. But the first one is, I need you to ask yourself, what specific questions 
are you unsure about as you think about your future career? Okay, so what specific questions are you unsure about as you think about your future career? The second question, or the second statement is, if I could wave a magic wand and grant you a wish, what would it be as it relates to your career? I can't grant you a million dollars, I'm sorry. I'd like to, but <laughs> the third one is, if you could jump forward five years, where do you want to be? And what would your job actually look like? So if you could jump forward five years, where do you want to be and what would your job look like? The next question is, what are the barriers that are holding you back from reaching that goal? And really think about that because before you go back and start looking through the four steps to achieving your goals, go in with that sort of frame of mind, in the answer to that question, and you'll find that masterclass will really help you. The other questions that you need to ask yourself in that space is who around you can help you get there? And then the other question is what around you can help you get there? So resources, the sort of thing that we've brought to you today, what can help you get there? Who can help you get there? You've got a network offering here. You've got resources offerings. That's just the start. You've, you've opened up your mind and you can do so much more. Certification course for cybersecurity, thank you. And then finally, I would say, who would you pick as a board of directors? So if you had a table in front of you, had a board table in front of you and you could fill six seats, and those six seats would be filled with people that can take you on your journey, who would be at that table? So that's my last question to you. So I'd love it if you could all go away and have a really good think about those questions, jump on, have a look at the masterclasses, come back through to Ribbit, to myself, we'll give you access to all of those courses and interviews. And I really sincerely hope that you get great value from those. And I just wanna say thanks so much for the opportunity to meet with you all today. And, and I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, Cindy. And just the last few words. So as Cindy's mentioned, all of her fabulous content is available to everybody for free, compliments of Ribbit. But also when you sign up to Ribbit, you will automatically get our newsletter and we, we post information on the latest interviews that Cindy has done. So that's another way to, to get an early heads up on the, the newest interviews that are available. The other thing I just want to finish up on saying is some, um, and it, Tends to one of the questions that Cindy's posed here, who around you can help you get there is, and I say this often, is don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. Most people out there are really willing to help, but also just give some thought to who else, who you can help. So that there is this element of reciprocity. So you're not just taking, but you're also giving. And that might be giving to the next generation, or it might just be a piece of information you've come across that you think someone in your network that you're looking to connect with might be might find interesting. So just always think about how can you give back as well as receive. And I think that will stand you very well in terms of building a network of people that are really willing to help you on your journey. And other than that, I think slightly over time, but I think, thank you for those who have completed the poll. If you haven't done that yet, please jump in quickly. And other than that, I just really want to thank Cindy um, for taking the time today to share all of that fabulous information and for partnering with Ribbit on an ongoing basis and really working with us to help students understand more about career path choices and become more employable when they graduate. And I also want to thank my colleague Paula for collaborating with me on this as we did with the Cyber Connect Talent Jam, which was also fabulous. And of course, Abby for pulling this together, hosting, keeping us on track. I really appreciate your help with this one. And to all of you lovely people, I wish I could see more faces. We wanted to capture some lovely pictures, but I understand some of you don't have webcams, that's okay. But I do appreciate you all taking the time here today and I hope you got some value out of this and we look forward to seeing you again. There's a lot of activity happening around, I think Paula and Yasmin have posted in chat about cyber through October. There's a ton of events 
If you can't find something that appeals to you, there's something wrong with you. There's so many things going on. It's a fantastic way to, again, build a network, build your knowledge uh, and decide whether that is a sort of a career path that you want to go down and whether it is from a technical perspective or a business perspective or a bit of a mix. So I'm going to ask Abby to wave us off and thank everybody again for being here today. Have a lovely afternoon. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Have a great afternoon. Bye.